What's good, Detroit Sports Nation? I am Eric Vincent, your host here at the DSN News Desk. Thank you for being here. We appreciate your time and support. Fresh off a Detroit Piston victory with so many headlines we got to get into. So much to talk about. So many entertaining things that happened in this game. Let's get right into it, man. Let's do it. 121-101 final score against the Orlando Magic. I believe this is the second time the Pistons have now played the Magic. And it seems like the Pistons turn on their best games against the Magic. The most needed victories. They're able to turn around and pull against this team. A similar team in a similar place where they're rebuilding and trying to establish their young talent. And before we peel into the layers of the games, before we get into the stats and before we get into all the details of the game, something historic and monumental happened in this game. Something I think that was bigger than the final score happened in this game that I cannot stop talking about. Something I can't stop replaying online. Check out our website, DetroitSportsNation.com if you want to see the replay of what I'm talking about. Killian Hayes was ejected for fighting today. Killian Hayes was chief-shotted by Mo Wagner on a loose ball where he was running back for a ball that was thrown and over and back by Orlando. Killian is running for the ball as he crosses half court, and Wagner shoves Killian with his hands and his arms into the piston bench where he falls and flails into the seats. Now, does Killian tuck tail? It just run away and just let any, you know, the refs deal with it? No, sir. Killian steps up, ready for all smoke available. Like a Waffle House cook on the third shift, Killian Hayes stepped up and knocked Wagner in the back of his head like he deserved, man. He was thrown out for it. Wagner was also thrown out for the flagrant two, which the refs ruled. And Hamadou Diallo was also thrown out because he pushed Wagner, before Killian got to get over there and get his lump in, the debate on Killian Hayes is officially over. <laughs> the conversation, the question marks, everything you may have wondered and guessed and asked about Killian Hayes is officially done. Killian Hayes is now a certified Detroit Piston legend no matter what. Killian Hayes is officially submitted his legacy as a worthy Detroit Piston. He stamped himself for some black forces. He's in here with some buffs. He is officially answered a lot of questions that Piston fans have wanted to see. Now, granted, I'm not advocating for fighting. I'm not advocating for violence. But... We absolutely wanted to see that dog inside of Killian in moments like these. We've seen it in terms of his chippiness on defense. We've seen him back down and play more aggressive offensively. And now, where he's hustling for a loose ball, where this didn't even have to happen. Wagner pushing him made no sense. And it put Killian in a place where he could have seriously been hurt. And Killian rightfully took his place and swung on him for some retaliation. And I'm not mad at him for that at all. Troy Weaver and Joy Casey said they want him to get Americanized and get tougher and kind of go through and feel the development stages of the grind in the NBA. And these are those kind of moments where you see a different form of Killian Hayes that we've been seeing this season. Killian Hayes stepping up to a big, and I don't care that it was behind him. I don't care that he hit him in the back of the head. If you hit me like that and push me where my momentum is carrying me into the bench where I could have landed on fans or, you know, hit myself on the bench and, like, hurt my leg or my hip or something like that, Killian Hayes had a full license to do exactly what he did. Now, I understand why the refs, you know, ejected him. You throw a swing or a punch at somebody, you got to go. The last thing they want to do is have another balance at the Palace. And granted, shout out to LCA. Nobody got out of their seats. Nobody went crazy. The Orlando bench came around, though, because Wagner was on the Piston bench in hostile territory in the area where he was at, which is even crazier for him to push him like that when the ball was, for one, not even allowed to be obtained by an Orlando Magic at that point. You could have just let it go out of bounds. Or you could have let Killian pick it up. Or you could simply just not push him. How about that? You could just be a simple player and let the play go on. But you decided to push him and ignite violence. That's your problem. Wagner asked for all the smoke that he got. And I don't feel bad for him. 
not in any way, shape, or form. I've been told he has a history of being a dirty player at times, and you saw it come out today. But shout out to Killian Hayes for handling it like he was supposed to. If any fan base can appreciate what Killian Hayes did today, it's the Detroit sports fan base. We're the home of the bad boys for Piston fans. The malice at the palace for the 04 Pistons with Ben and Rasheed and those boys. We are always down to fight a buck and stand up for what's ours in Detroit sports. And Killian Hayes officially got stamped by standing up for his today, man. Shout out to Killian Hayes. <laughs> I'm so proud of what he did today, man. That was cool to see. It helps not, uh, it kind of helps ignite care in games like this because for real, I mean, these are two of the worst teams in the NBA. These kind of things help games get a little more chippy as they did between players. You can see them defensively. You saw Cole Anthony, you know, chirping a lot. Sadiq Bay talking some trash, who we're going to talk about in a little bit. Like, these kind of games help develop rivalries over time. And especially considering the Pistons and the Magic are on similar timelines of rebuilding with their young star pieces and their, you know, core foundation that they're trying to set. These kind of things help make these games and these teams more watchable and entertaining. So I appreciate these kind of things. It's not always about the X's and O's of the game. Sometimes these kind of chippy, you know, tension moments help make these games a little bit more entertaining. So shout out to Killian Hayes. Shout out to the Pistons bench for holding it down, for standing up for their teammate. They've done a lot of love and done a lot of riding for Sadiq, or not Sadiq, but for Killian Hayes. And I'm really appreciative of it, man. So shout out to the Pistons for what they did in that regard, man. That was cool to see. Now, getting into the game itself, this was a game that the Detroit Pistons needed bad. They had been on a horrible slide, lost six, seven games in a row, and the Clippers game that you just blew was disastrous. It was absolutely horrible blowing the game where you had a double-digit lead with three minutes left, where the Clippers were playing their second unit players, and you still managed to lose. So the Pistons needed a game like this badly. Now, it wasn't the prettiest game all around, but the Pistons got a lot of step-up performances that they needed in a huge way. A guy who's been stepping up in a lot of these kind of manners has been Alec Burks. He's been one of my favorite players to watch with the Detroit Pistons all season. 32 points from him. He was 10-10 the whole game until he decided to chuck up a shot at the last second when the game was already decided and over and the game clock was about to shut off. He chucked up a shot to close the game for no reason, and it ruined his perfect game. It ruined his perfect 10 for 10, uh, but still a fantastic game for him, man. 10-11 for the field, 6-7 from three, 6-6 six six from the free throw line, didn't turn the ball over, just a very effective and efficient player, man. Like, I, I love play, watching his game. He is a very valuable piece to have, and honestly, I've been saying it, and I'm going to keep saying it. I don't want the Pistons to get rid of him. If they make some moves to get some extra draft picks with dealing with somebody like Bojan, or they somehow swing a deal for, like, Sadiq or whatever, I don't want Alec Burks included in any deals. I feel like Alec Burks is a player that the Pistons can use long term to come off the bench with a player like Killian Hayes, who's growing and still trying to establish himself as a young scorer in the NBA. It's effective and helpful to have a guy like Alec Burks, who's crafty with the ball, who can shoot and score from anywhere, who can create for other teammates, who can get to the free throw line super effectively, who can play off ball. He's 30 years old, if I'm not mistaken. And so he's kind of that young veteran age where, you know, you don't need a bunch of babies on your team. You want guys who are seasoned veterans. Alec Burks has been very, very key to have off of this bench. And I really don't want to see him go. I really hope the Pistons find a way to hold on to him. Again, he's on a rental deal with just one year after getting traded over here with Nerlens Noel. How long he's going to stay, I don't know. But my fingers are crossed that the Pistons find a way to keep him long term. The way he plays, the value that he brings, his ability to close fourth quarters. Because you see a lot of games where Jaden Ivey doesn't play a whole lot of the fourth quarter. Because he gets kind of careless with the basketball. He turns it over at times, especially in games where you want him to close out and be a little more sure-handed with the Rock. So in moments like that, they bring on Alec Burks, who can get good shots, get to the free throw line, be productive, and not put the ball in harm's way like your young players have been doing. Um, I think that's huge to have, and I really want to see them hold on to Alec Burks as long as they can. Um, I think he's that valuable for this team. So shout out to Alec Burks for how well he played. Sadiq Bey, 
we got good Sadiq today. <laughs> you know Sadiq. He's, you know, hot one day, cold one game. Like, it's just, it's very, it's very hard to predict which Sadiq you're going to get. And honestly, a lot of times when we predict the worst to come, that's been more of a story with his game. And for whatever reason, it was not the case for today. Sadiq, 28 points, 8 of 16 from the field, 6 of 11 from 3 is the best part of that. I love that because Sadiq's shot has been terrible all season. He looked he looked lost when he's shooting threes now. Like He don't look like the same comfortable dude, and it's, it's really gets frustrating to watch sometimes. So it was nice to see his three ball fall. Uh, six of eight from the free throw line, a plus 20 from the field, eight rebounds to help out on the glass, really showing his versatility and his you know, value for the team as well off the bench. And the Pistons needed that support off the bench in a major way because they didn't get a whole lot of consistent contribution scoring-wise in the starters. So only 14 from Bojan, 4 of 14 from the field. Uh, didn't shoot good from 3, 1 of 5 from the long line. Uh, a lot of shots for Beef, two, beef Stew, 4 of 12 for 11 points, 2 of 8 from the three-point line. Um, I'm still not a super fan of, you know, the, the high volume shots that he's been taking from three. Um, he's been kind of efficient throughout the seasons, but I don't want to see him, you know, be the focal point of their offense where it's him taking three pointers. Like, I just, I don't like that. Uh, Jay Nivey struggled a little bit again, eight points, one of seven from the field, six boards, four assists, three turnovers. He's still trying to work out some, you know, kinks and some, you know, sloppy tendencies that he has with the ball at times. And that's normal from a rookie. Again, he's shown some highs. He's shown some lows. I'm not going to go too crazy on Jaden Ivey. Again, I've talked about how I think fans are over-scrutinizing with him because a lot of the struggles that we're seeing are normal for rookies. So I'm not going to go too crazy about that for him. Uh, before Killian Hayes was ejected, uh, wasn't really his best game. Only scored five points. Uh, only played 15 minutes. So, you know, we don't have to deep dive too much on Killian's game. But somebody's game that we will deep dive on is somebody that I'm falling in love with, man. <laughs> I'm, I love watching Jalen Dern play for this basketball team. I, I've been preaching it. I'm going to keep preaching it. I'm going to keep talking about how sensational this guy is. Because every game, every week, every month that we watch this kid play, he is growing and doing more and more for this basketball team. Uh, only seven points, but 18 rebounds. Eight on the offensive glass, ten on the defensive glass. This dude is absolutely sensational, man. I, I love watching this guy play. I love the screens he sets for this team to help get the guards open. I love his short roll passing when he catches the ball from the elbow in, you know, to get up to the paint where he's able to kick it to, you know, perimeter shooters or to drop it off to Bojan who's cutting or Jaden who's cutting or Killian who's cutting. His passing and his vision is spectacular. He is doing so much for this team where, again, I stand by him being the second most valuable piston to this team because the stuff that he's able to do in your front court, you're not getting from anybody else on a night-to-night -night basis. And he's showing, I don't care anymore, he's showing, I think, the potential to be an elite top 10 center in the NBA because he's... He's not just excelling at one thing at this point. You're seeing the potential to do other things. You're seeing as he gets the ball more, he's getting more comfortable with finding different ways to score outside of just catching easy, you know, putbacks or dunks at the block. He's finding ways to, you know, get hook shots up. He's still trying his mid-range shot whenever he gets a chance. And he's getting more comfortable with that. And I think that's only going to keep growing, especially when Kay Cunningham gets back and more talent is assembled around Jalen Dern. More shooters being assembled around him. I think you're only going to see that serve to be more productive for him. And the way he's been playing has been absolutely sensational. I, I love watching this guy play, man, for real. Like, he's, even when he doesn't grab the offensive rebound, it seems like every single time the Pistons get a shot up and the ball is around the rim or in the paint, he's able to tap the ball and get it out to his teammates to get them an extra opportunity at a shot. And the Pistons have not had that all season. They've been getting destroyed on the glass. They've been getting beat up in the paint with they're playing these small ball lineups. And they had Dern only playing, you know, sub-20 minutes off the bench. Now he's playing big boy minutes. Played 33 tonight. And he's shown that he can handle all of it. 
even when he gets in foul trouble, had five fouls tonight, but was still able to make a difference in the paint. Was still able to be the most productive player in the paint. When you're playing against the Orlando Magic team who has size all over the place with Paolo and Bol Bol, um, Obamba when Wagner was on the court. I mean, Franz Wagner is their shooting guard. He's, what, 6'9", if I'm not mistaken? Like They have a very big team and a lot of size. So this wasn't an easy game for somebody like Jalen Dern. And to be able to dominate and be the man in the paint to hold things down for the Detroit Pistons, he was so fun to watch. It was so fun to watch. I, he is He is growing every single time. He has been... I think the most fun piston to watch consistently throughout this season. A lot of guys have had ups and downs. A lot of guys have had, you know, their, you know, their low moments where they look like they can be kind of sloppy. Jalen Dern on his worst games is still making a difference. It's still finding ways to put tomahawk dunks on his opponent's head. Still finding ways to dominate and look like a young Dwight Howard on the glass. He looks sensational. I, he, <laughs> J- Troy Weaver needs to take a victory lap, man. That trade up for him, I don't know what the Charlotte Hornets were thinking. I don't know what the Knicks were thinking. I don't know what any of these teams were thinking. Passing on Jalen Durr letting him fall all the way down as far as he did in the draft. But it's okay. The Pistons now got their big man in the center, and I cannot wait to see how this kid unfolds, man. Awesome game by the Pistons, 121-101. Talk to me in the comment section. I'd love to hear from you. What did you think about Killian Hayes coming to the league moment? I think he finally had it in this kind of game right here, man, where, you know, everybody wanted to see that dog in Killian. You saw it on full display on Mo on Wagner tonight. Talk to me in the comment section. I'd love to hear your feedback from the game. What did you think about the Pistons? What did you think about Killian Hayes, Jalen Duran, the Magic? Even if you're a Magic fan, you find your way over to this video. I'd love to hear from you as well. Talk to me in the comments. Make sure you like the video and subscribe. Subscribe to the channel as well as we keep ramping on our way to 6,000 subscribers, getting closer and closer. Thank you for helping us make that happen. Please keep pushing subscribe if you're new to the channel. And hit that notification bell to get the instant ding and notification when we get new content your way right here at DSN. Make sure you are locking in on our social media as well. Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok. All the above, search and follow Detroit Sports Nation and tap in with yours truly, of course, at I am Eric Vincent. Thank you for tuning in, Piston fans and Detroit Sports Nation. I appreciate you dearly. I'll be back again soon with another update right here from the DSN News Desk. Peace.